this wrap up. <laughs> I know. We're gonna try. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Money Reads, where I talk about books and things. And I just want to address the fact that <laughs> the sweater is back, so you know that I got some ranting to do. And also that it's a really nice day outside, but that this was the worst reading month of the year for me and i actually only finished i think four books but i i, I did dnf a bunch of books so i want to get into that because you know what we're gonna we're gonna start this off with me just ranting because i feel like ranting because you know what i've had a fucking hard month and i feel like i need a little ranty rant so we're gonna rant so let's talk about the first book i dnf'd and, and this, this is my own fucking fault. Because all of you were like, Monica, that book fucking sucks. And I was like, I'm still gonna read it anyway. And it's this shit. Okay, listen, this is not as bad as people paint it out to be. I mean, the Harry Potter thing in the beginning, I shouldn't have read the acknowledgements. Like, it's like, oh, spend time over obsessing Harry Potter. We don't talk about Harry Potter anymore. We just don't. It's just, it's done with. Can we just, like, get over it? We don't. But anyway, other than that, this was written, it doesn't sound like Adam Silvera because Adam Silvera is, like, he's been writing for a while and this sounds like a debut written by a 16-year-old. You know, like if Alice Walsman wrote it. No, no, no shame. No, no, no shame. So, um... I don't know what to say about this. It was boring. The dialogue was like, that's like, nobody talks like that. And you know, they use this, this, do they use it? Yeah, they use this thing where I hate it. And it's like, when the when characters refer to each other as bro. I never call like my sister, hey sis. I, I never do that. Who does that? You know who else did that? Patrick Ness in that one book release where they were constantly like, bro this and bro that. Do you call your siblings bro or do you just be like, hey, person's name? You know? So this is just boring as fuck. Like, it was boring. I couldn't. It, and, it, and it, the concept is okay, I guess. But also, I wanted it to be sci-fi. It's not. It, I'm just... Oh great, now the sun's going behind a cloud, so if everything seems weird, that's why it's not my mood dampening this review. But anyway, the next book that I tried, that I DNF'd, no, not that I tried, that I DNF'd, because I tried it later on, but we're not, we're gonna, we're not gonna stick to time here, because time, as we have learned, is relative. So I tried reading Red Rising. Oh my god. Big no man. No ma'am. The moment the female character was described, I was like, guess who's gonna get killed off in order to give the male character something to do or something to rebel against or give him his life meaning because that's what women are for, you know, in, in literature. We, we're there to get killed off or to get raped in order to give the male main character a reason to do anything. This book. First of all, first of all, I low-key, look, I don't like the Hunger Games, um, there's a video about that, but, um, the point is, I, I, I'm not a fan of the Hunger Games, I don't mind it, like, I'm, I'm cool with it, I'm, I'm so happy that it exists, like, it made way for a bunch of Hunger Games copies, and it also made way for a lot of you to start reading, so that's cool and fun, but I feel like Pierce Brosman, is it Pierce Brosman? Because I always confuse him with the actor. Is it? Ahem. I'm back. It's Pierce Brown. I knew it was like something. I am so, I'm sorry to Pierce Brosman. Personally, I apologize for having said that he wrote Red Rising. But anyway. So the point is, like, so they, they have this case system. And, um, there's this guy who is in, like, the lowest case system, or one of the lowest, like, the Hunger Games. And then there's a dystopian government who basically um, has them all starving like the Hunger Games. And then this guy wants to go up against the big evil and there's a song that they're supposed to sing. I mean that they're not supposed to sing. And like that song 
makes people like get really angry from the upper governments and kill you like the Hunger Games. So yeah, everything seems a lot like the Hunger Games, man. And also, I can't get past, like I, I was thinking like, look, this is a beloved series in the sci-fi community, the SFF community. Like, you should give it a chance, Monica. You shouldn't be such a bitch and be like, I don't like it. So, but every time I think about the female, like the, the wife's description, like she could not be, like has Pierce Brown ever met a woman? Like, I'm not sure he has. Because, like, of course, they're all described as thin and beautiful, and of course, and I was talking about this with my husband. Why is it that in every series, like, like, hair is such a, like, important component of, like, a woman's personality? Not a man's, mind you, but it's always, like, her raven dark locks, or her fiery red hair, or her silken whatever blonde hair like pfft, it's just fucking hair i don't see you guys describing males as having dark silky hair that shone in the moonlight you know and shit like that and then there's this other thing that i fucking hate where it's like the mc the main character is like this like fuck the government man you know and i fucking am like a, such a rebel and blah and Oh, but the only one that knows how to calm me down is my wife, which is the one that everyone wanted to marry in the town, but she only wanted me, so she waited for me, and... Holy, oh, Lord Jesus Christ, up in heaven, help me. It was so bad. Like, I... I can't get past it. Like, it's so stereotypical it like the way it describes women is really annoying and uh of course she has a twin sister and his best friend also proposed to his wife but his wife was like nah so he proposed to his twin sister and his twin sister said and not, not his twin sister her twin sister and then she said yes and then they're married and it's like what the fuck oh my god why do you all like, like I need somebody to tell me in the comments how you got past all that misogyny and just sexism and just really bad writing and like clear ripoff of the Hunger Games for this to be such a beloved series. Like please just tell me, am I missing something? Did I get a parody of the book? Because man, see, see, see how angry I am? Like girl, I mean if, if it wasn't so hot outside, which is not that hot outside. But I need my tea to just like sip it because I don't get it. I don't get it. Like the the female description and, the, and okay, spoiler warning for Red Rising. This happens in the like the first 30 pages because of course, the moment you hear the girl's like description, she's going to get killed. But I'm going to give you a spoiler and tell you how she dies. So like they like go somewhere they're not supposed to go or some shit and they see some shit they're not supposed to see unlike the Hunger Games which is totally not the same book or not the same concept. And look, I know that there are only so many concepts and like I know everything is already written but come on now. And then like she dies singing the song that his father sung and all I could think about was like Katniss in the movie singing that stupid song. It's not stupid, it's a good song. But anyway, all I could think was about that and like, like, like I almost went like, you know, when she died because it was like, what the fuck, it's the same thing. And then, okay, spoiler over. And then, well, that's what makes him go after the government. So basically, if his wife hadn't died, he wouldn't have done anything. So she was just the vessel for him to become a rebel. Um, I'm done talking about Red Rising. I'm so done. So let's talk about books I'm in the middle of right now. This is my advanced reader's copy that I won in a giveaway. I never win anything and I won something. I was so excited. I thought it was like a scam and they were just gonna like, like send me, I don't know nudes or something or like used underwear but no it was real i did win it and it's the space between worlds by Micaiah johnson now i'm in like i would say i'm 35 percent into this i have no fucking clue what's going on <laughs> like okay i get it but i'm there was a part there that went 
a little too fast that explains a, a like a really big plot in the book and I was like wait 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 what, wait wait that there's something here something is happening and um it's good I'm just a little bit confused I'm just confused so um but I'm gonna keep going with it it's really good um and it's also it's it's adult sci-fi but it reads like YA sci-fi like if you told me the character was 16 I would believe it so um yeah so far it's good I'm just I'm not done with it because I'm reading at the rate of molasses all right another book that I'm in the middle of that I almost went back to but then I'm like girl your mental health the sun is back behind a cloud we don't like clouds today but clouds anyway Another book that I'm in the middle of right now that I am sure, I am sure and I, that I'm gonna finish and I am loving, but I'm just slowly getting my mental health to a place where it's not like, you know? So, um, this book was really not helping with that and I actually had to put it down because it was making my mental health worse because it, ha it deals a lot with death of people you love accepting deaths and also like a, not yeah abuse of young children and it just it, it, it was very strong it's very good oh there's the, the sun again it's very good but um your girl just couldn't deal with it and that is the obel escape by nk jensen i am gonna finish you i am baby i was loving this book before my mental health took a deep like a deep dive into the a bottomless pit of despair so once we're out of the bottomless pit of despair i'm gonna pick it up but here's a pro tip you don't have to finish a book that is like good and that you're enjoying but that it's also hurting your mental health you can put a book down and it'll be right there for you baby when you feel better so i am 50 percent into this and i plan to read this at some point probably not in September, maybe in October when I'm feeling better because I am slowly starting to feel better but I have ups and downs. If you see my weekend reading vlog which will go up after this, you will see that some days I'm like up here and then other days I'm down here and some days I'm just in the middle and we're trying to work with that, me with my doctor and stuff like that. So yeah, this follows the first, this is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. It's so, so good. It's so good, but it's also really, really heartbreaking. And we gotta put you down for now, but it's okay. It's okay, child. We'll pick you back up. It's okay. So after all that, I actually read some shit in August. So I'm gonna start with the one that you guys already know that I read, and that is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I needed this book in my life as much as I need chocolate sometimes. Basically, this book gave me the... Reminded me that I can read. I know that sounds weird. But I was in such a slump and I couldn't pick anything up. And everything that I was picking up was like making me feel depressed and sad. And like, ugh, I want to, you know, cry and all that. So, I was like, you know what I need? I need just a fun read. I need something fun that's going to take my brain out of the space it's in right now so i picked this up and it did exactly that so what is this book about this book is about a haunted ikea superstore that's basically it and there's this girl in here that i identified with a lot who feels like she is stuck in life like she's going nowhere she dropped out of college just like fucking stupid ass did and you know it, 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 she feels stuck in her life and she knows that this is as good as it's gonna get. So she's kind of down, but then she finds strength and, and perseverance and she finds that she can do more than she thought she could with the help of some friendly ghosts. Not friendly, they're not friendly at all. This book does get really scary. Like at first I was like, oh, this is not scary. And at some point I was like, jeez. You know, it, 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 was, it was intense, but I really enjoyed it. It's no more than a 3.5 star. It's an okay book. Like, it's in my okay shelf, if you saw my bookshelf tour. But you know what? In my heart, it's a 5 star because it reminded me that your girl can actually finish a book. So, yeah. This was the first book I read in August. And I read it, like, in, on, like, I finished it, like, August 15th. That means I read, like, nothing for the beginning two weeks of August. 
this wrap up is such a mess i'm sorry i had to change out batteries i'm you know what but it's okay sometimes we need a little bit of chaotic energy and and you know do you come here for the non-chaotic energy i don't think so and if you do welcome to my channel it's just a bunch of chaos also you're tilted i'm sorry about that so anyway what else did i read in this month i actually had to look it up on goodreads because i couldn't remember but then, after reading Horror Store and realizing that I hadn't lost my ability to read, I picked up the last book in the Memoirs of Lady Trent series, and that is A Sanctuary of Wings by Marie Brennan. And I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. I can't really tell you what it's about without spoiling everything that comes before. And I, I do have to say that this took more a, of a fantastical twist than like the scientific stuff that was going on before. But I didn't mind it. I actually thought that it went really well with the story. I love the story. It, it was a lot of fun. And I just basically had a grand old time listening to the audiobook. And that's another series that I finished. So that also gave me like a big, like a bit of a pick me up like yes I finished another series because if you know me you know that I really like to finish series like I don't like to go into series like beginning that I'm sorry my cat just went out and we're on a seventh floor and I don't like having series open if I'm gonna read a series I like to binge series so that I can feel that sense of completion of having finished them if not I just kind of feel like I'm missing something I know not a lot of people are like that, but see, that's the reason why I'm not starting Leviathan Wakes right now. It's because Leviathan Wakes apparently has nine books with one more set to come out. Look, I have the mime order sitting on my shelves. I have, what's the other one? Um, the Murderbot Diaries, and now the Wayfarer series is coming out with another book. Y'all just making me, no, I can't read so many series, so... I was very happy to finish this one. The ending was very satisfactory. It was everything I wanted and more. So yeah, I'm very, like overall, this series overall, I'm going to give it a strong 4.5 stars. It's so good. I 100% recommend that you pick this up and please pick it up just so that you can read about an older woman main character that is just a badass even in her 40s and and she's telling the story I guess when she's in her 60s or 70s and she just is a woman that I would feel great if I had a daughter for her to aspire to be like this person so that's the well, that's the second book I read in August what a, what a mess this, this is a, just a mess, but you know what? I'm really glad that I'm doing it like this and that I'm like showing you all the real me. I'm looking up Goodreads to see what else I read. Oh, oh my God, oh my God. So listen, listen. After that, I read The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. I love this book so fucking much. This book was like, it was a bomb. It was a, it was like a, a, a bath of fresh water, like when I really needed it because I hadn't read any, this is, I would say this is more dystopian than sci-fi, but we're going to call it sci-fi. It's fine. It's an umbrella term. So this was just such a beautiful adult dystopian sci-fi book and I really like the Japanese um, style of it because here's the thing when we read we are used to reading Western books and I like that this doesn't fall under a lot of the Western society ideas of writing like do we get any answers as to what's really going on in this book no do we know why things are going down? Do we get people trying to take down governments? Do we, not, none of that shit. It's just a character driven book about an island in Japan where people slowly start to forget things. For example, you forget what a book is. So you might look at a book, but you can't remember the name. You don't know the function of it. You, you don't, you don't you don't read it 
So what they do is they burn all the books and then just forget about it. Birds disappear, flowers disappear, and slowly things start disappearing. Nobody knows why or what the end goal is, but that's not the point. The point is that there are some people that remember and the memory police try to take these people away. So what the main character of this book does is she finds out that the editor, um, that her editor, is somebody that can remember things. There is no way for them to forget. So before the memory police gets him, she decides to basically hide him away in her house. And it's just such a beautiful ode to remembrance, to, to the power that forgetting has over us and the love of things and how things matter. Photographs matter, flowers matter, birds matter, your voice matters. And it's about not forgetting who you are or your voice. And this was 100% my favorite read of the month. I This is going in top 10 of the year and probably top 10 of my life. I absolutely adore this book. And I recommend that if you want something different, something outside probably of your comfort zone, this book just is it. The writing style of this book is, it's so clear that it was translated from Japanese because there's just such a beautiful gentleness to the writing. There's just such a beautiful, it's almost minimalistic, you know, but in a way that it's, still lyrical and I don't know how to explain it I mean you guys know that I've been studying Japanese for a year so I can kind of see like the original text like I get why words are put in certain places and it's just so beautiful if you get anything out of this other than the fact that I am a shady bitch please pick up memory police by Yoko Okawa it's really 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 good so at this point in this not at this point but like in the story that I'm telling you of my reading in August it was the last week of August and I wanted to participate in the history history historiathon historiathon or the history historiathon challenge historiathon challenge and it's hosted by Emma over at a cup of books along with a bunch of other people whose channel I will link up above I'm sorry I keep blanking on names but you know this is just like a chaotic thing like my life right now but anyway I decided to read the five the old the untold lives of the women killed by Jack the Ripper by Ray, Haley Rubenhold and oh my gosh this book is incredible. This book is amazing. This book tells the story of five women that were wrongly, wrongly accused of being prostitutes. And not that there's anything wrong with being a prostitute, but the fact is that the book itself says, saying they were just prostitutes. Like, oh, they were one of those people, like those unwanted. And it's like, no, they weren't. And even if they were, and I'm going to read you exactly what it says at the end. Don't worry, it's not a spoiler. You know what happens, but it says, The victims of Jack the Ripper were never just prostitutes. They were daughters, wives, mothers, sisters, and lovers. They were women. They were human beings. And surely that in itself is enough. And that is what this book tries to tell you. Like the re the real story of this these women is actually a tale of how bad things were in England at the time of their murders and how it was easier for them to just say, "Oh, it was just prostitutes" because prostitutes were seen as lesser than human. And that is just such a horrible, horrible thing. And this book humanizes these women and actually tells you that they weren't prostitutes. The only one that was actually ever a prostitute was only one of them. And she wasn't killed while out in the streets soliciting. That, that just didn't happen. 
none of these women were killed out in the streets soliciting and the reality is that they fell into they were victims not only of jack the ripper but they were victims of the time they lived in that was horrible to women i mean if it's horrible now imagine at this time and the fact that we kind of idolize jack the ripper and forget how his victims suffered and unjustly are written off as just prostitutes is horrific like we can name so many serial killers out there but can we name their victims unless they were famous you know i'm you know i'm talking about the manson family like we can name the manson family we can name the people they killed because they were associated with famous people but usually we have this cult of humanizing serial killers and yet their victims their stories remain faceless and i really loved the way this book was built i think the story that most got to me was annie's story she lived a horrible time because she was an alcoholic and she tried to fight her alcoholism but she just couldn't do it she didn't have the means to and and it was really 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 sad how she ended her life you know and how things for her could have been really really good but she just couldn't catch a break so i 100 percent urge you to please pick this book up it's amazing it packs a real punch and it reminds us how history is really cruel to women how we are today still really cruel to women particularly women that don't fit the stereotype of you know a white upper class woman like anybody that is poor we just mistreat even more than if they weren't lower class and that's really sad but the good thing is here you can meet these women and you can see that their lives were not about jack the ripper they were so much more than that and it's such a beautiful book it's probably one of my favorite non-fictions that i've read this year except for soul of an octopus which you know is my jam the last thing i finished this month was to be taught if fortunate by becky chambers now again you're gonna see that in my reading vlog um how i finished this book I love this book. It's a five out of five stars. Becky Chambers just writes, like again, I am her target audience. She writes for me. Here's the thing. I don't think this book was good for my mental health at the time I read it because whenever I read Becky Chambers books, it was always like really uplifting, really feel good sci-fi. But there's a scene, that, but this book is not necessarily feel good and it's fact it has a lot of mention of depression and I will put a trigger warning out there for a kind of suicide attempt so um yeah I don't think it was a good idea for me to read it but I had no idea that this was in it and this is why it's so important that we have trigger warnings in books um, because had I known this book had a pseudo suicide attempt suicidal thoughts and a kind of yeah difficult things i wouldn't have picked it up but i was like hey it's a becky chambers novella and it's great it's beautiful it's wonderful but the reality is it wasn't as the best thing that i should have read at the time that i read it so i i recommend it i gave it five out of five stars i loved it but i wish that i wouldn't have been in the state of mind that i was in when i read it so this book is about some astronauts that get sent to study planets it's kind of like um uh, star trek where they they're just there to observe they're there to learn but they're there they're not there to colonize or to disturb and um something happens back on earth and they have a decision to make and it's a very difficult decision and each planet they go to 
has different atmospheres has different things i think that that's really inventive and really beautiful i think it, for fans of interstellar you're gonna love this novella and um it has it features beautiful polyamorous queer relationships and it also has a character that is trans and it has queer characters all over it's just beautiful it's a beautiful well-written book i always trust becky chambers to write incredible queer different relationships and she didn't let me down in this one and it was a great book honestly it was really good i just wish that i had read it at a different time because it put me back in kind of a low bad place but it's not it's not as bad as i'm making it out to scene just remember that i am going through a process right now of um my mental health not being where i would like it to be so i think if you are just like n not going through you know depression right now this book is definitely for you i wish that i had waited a little bit to read it Woo! and that's it those are all the books that i read this month which amount to a grand total of one two three four five five books and then i dnf two books and i am in the middle of two books so not the best reading month in the world but you know what i still read something and even if i hadn't read anything whatever it doesn't matter and at the end what matters is that i still love reading <laughs> you know it's not like because i read i don't read one month i don't like reading anymore so yeah, um, I'm sorry this was so chaotic, but honestly, this is just how I'm feeling. I hope you like my hat, by the way. I put on a hat for you because my hair is a disaster. Um, and honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I really enjoyed filming this. I, I hope that you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed filming it, even though it was a mess and the sun kept getting behind the clouds and my cat was like driving me crazy. But you know what? Such is life, my friend. And yeah, I hope your August was better than mine. And I hope both of our Septembers is better than ever. I hope you're taking care of yourself. Be safe out there. And without a further ado, I remind you that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, come hell or high water. And that I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye.